Is this the longest lasting car brand? Or is this the longest lasting car brand? How about these ones? Or even this brand right here. Are they known to be the longest lasting car brands on the market today? No, in fact, they're not. I'm going to share a list of five of the longest lasting car manufacturers, why that is, and we'll get into it right now. Let's go. Life's too short to drive boring cars. ICcars.com says that the industry average is about 1.2% of all vehicles combined will make it over 200,000 miles. So let's take this from the top number five, working our way to the best. Right there, fifth spot belongs to the blue oval right here. What are we looking at? One of the most popular SUVs on the market today. There you go. We're talking about a Ford and Ford has some of the longest lasting vehicles on the market, believe it or not. And while they have a lot of junk available, like focuses with some of those weird automatic DCT transmissions, clearly there are many long lasting Ford vehicles. I mean, Ford's never been renowned for high quality per se, and the fit and finish isn't always the best. You do have chrome pieces that do come apart. You do have certain older generations of vehicles like this that do put carbon monoxide in the panel. Of course, you have paint problems, such as like right there where they peels away, and certainly a host of other electronic issues. But Ford has been building full-size pickup trucks. That's right, body on actual U-beams. A lot of them are V8 engines. Up until recently, they've had twin turbo V6s that have been relatively robust. The fact remains they're solid, big, stout vehicles that are definitely built to last a long time. Now they have their share of issues, electronics, turbos on the late model versions. There's been drop valves and a host of other challenges. But the fact remains about 1.5% of Fords are still on the road after 200,000 miles. So Michael Holden actually asked, what about the Ford EcoBoom? How are they? Well, let's just start here. You know, some of the F-150s, 2.7s dropping valves, three and a half liter carbon buildup, of course, timing chain problems. We've heard cam phasers and all alike. Of course, we have Escape, the early generations of these latest ones with the EcoBoost. We have coolant leaks. We have coolant making its way allegedly into the combustion chamber. You have overheating problems and a catastrophic failures waiting to happen. Turbos and leaks in general. And then the EcoTurd here, I mean the Eco, sport actually has another one and that particular one has a timing has a timing belt issue as well coupled up with another big one an oil pump that's actually belt driven and is prone to failure at very very low miles every specific ecoboost engine has its own nuances and own troubles but it's definitely one yeah, just keep on waiting. Maybe they'll get it right one of these days. Now the next manufacturer that's clearly one of the top five for lasting the longest is from this particular brand right here. Well, this here is a Corvette. Everybody knows the distinguishable Corvette. Everybody definitely is familiar with what we're looking at here. Yeah, they have the big brakes and Z06. We have a hot rod version here. You can get a manual or an automatic transmission. And these are hot rod vehicles all day long. Why is that? Well, the fact remains, it's on a large, easy running, naturally aspirated V8 engine that doesn't work too hard when you're not working it too hard. That these are good for well over 500 horsepower, but the fact remains is even though GM has a host of a lot of junky little cars, you should generally stay away from their entry level vehicles. The bottom line is large engines like this, naturally aspirated, the LS style V8 engines are bulletproof. They are good for many, many miles as well. Chevy also builds big full-size vehicles like this. Pickup trucks, this clearly is built on a full-size half-ton chassis. What are we looking at here? Well, this is a Tahoe. Of course, very hard to see that. Very large and in charge, but it's essentially a full-size SUV built on a pickup truck chassis, meaning that it can take abuse. It can run hard, hit off-roads, and do it all in style. You're not likely going to blow this vehicle apart because it has a suspension and the chassis to take hard duty. Of course, you can tow a lot of weight with these vehicles. We're looking at an RST, which is a slick version. You've got to like their latest decals right there. You do have a lot of room in a lot of these vehicles, but the fact remains these are great for towing, hauling, and a lot of miles. They have large, naturally aspirated V8 engines under the hood that mean that they rotate at a low RPM. 5.3 liter V8, 6.2 liter V8. There's a few lifter issues along the way, but generally get that sorted out. These large heavy duty chassis with large slow turning V8 engines mean that they're lasting a long, long time. 1.6% of Chevys are still on the road after 200,000 miles. Michael Pear asked the question, what are the worst GM vehicles you can buy? Well, I'm gonna start out by saying generally the smaller engines. Chevy Cruze is a problem area. A lot of their three cylinders that you're finding in some of their late model, smaller mid-size SUVs, I would always stay away from a three cylinder turbo engine, likely going to have problems. Some of their other vehicles, electric vehicles, EU bolts. Of course, there you might have an issue. There's been lots of those burning. V6 
you want to have more success, stick with the bigger V8s, 5.3, 6.2s. Now they've had lifter issues too, so they're not perfect, but they're definitely going to outlast many of the other smaller engines. 3.6 liters, the early generation, lots of issues there too. So try to stay away from most of the 3.6 liter V6s and you should be good to go. Go with the larger engines and you're generally a lot safer. And the third from the top of vehicles and their brands that are lasting well over 200,000 miles goes to this particular manufacturer right here. Again, as we're looking, it's another upscale version of Chevy that we just spoke of. And we have a GMC, a General Motors vehicle right here. Very similar to what we're looking at the Yukon by Chevy. Here we have a GMC and this one's a decked out high roller version. GMC as we see there. And this is the Denali. This means you've got the big, large, slow turning 6.2 liter V8. Makes tons of power and turns really slow. So generally, other than the sloppy transmissions that are a little bit weak in these, there is a recall for that. These vehicles are built to last a long time. Why? Well, I mean, look at the big heavy duty space here. You've got lots of gap for lots of articulation on the suspension, heavy duty brakes, discs all the way front and back. You've got very sturdy looking chassis all the way around. Big exhaust tips, which allow the exhaust flow easily out of that naturally aspirated V8 engine. And again, as I say, overall, it's just a big, large, heavy duty vehicle that's built to just take up the bumps and the humps and heavy tow haul duty. Easy working, built to last a long time. So they're definitely good to last a long time, 1.8% over 200,000 miles. So the second best brand that's literally going to last the longest time is this particular manufacturer right here with the big H in the front. Let's take a closer look. Here we have a Honda, clearly a late model version of this beautiful little sedan dressed in white here. Yeah, you do have some great touches and alloy wheels, small wheels, but they're affordable to replace. You have a sunroof as well as some great detail. Love the chrome detail as well there. And Clearly some nice rear LED taillights by this Honda Civic. Well, Civics are gonna last a long, long time. So are the Accords. The cars are generally built very well. But the 1.5 liter turbo four has oil and fuel dilution issues. That's one of the limitations as well as some of the CVTs have caused a few problems along the way, but generally Honda is rugged and bulletproof. With vehicles like this beautiful little unit dressed in gray, we have an all wheel drive HRV or the older school Honda CRVs. They're all built to last a long, long time. But Honda is still utilizing some naturally aspirated engines, V6 engines that are great for tons of miles. For example, the Honda Ridgeline, almost 4% of those vehicles last over 200,000 miles. And the Honda Odyssey, average about 3.2% of those make it over 200,000 miles. So virtually any Honda is a safe bet from a reliability and longevity standpoint. And clearly they own the reliability crown almost next to only one manufacturer. JSQ asked the question, if the three and a half liter V6 that you often find in a Honda Passport as reliable as some of the other models, for example, like the Pilot. Well, generally the three and a half liter V6 is bulletproof. However, recent news off the up, recent update in the news is actually stating that 2015 to 2019, three and a half liter V6 engines that you often find in a lot of those Hondas are now subject to a recall. 250,000 vehicles, yes, because of crankshaft defects and the fact that you could see rod bearing failures, catastrophic engine failures completely. Now, while this is not likely, there is a slight possibility of it. Definitely want to get it checked out and see if that vehicle that you've been shopping for falls within that space. NHTSA is your spot. And as such, Honda, 1.9% of the average of all Honda models make it over 200,000 miles. What's number one? Well, let's go. Right there, we have one of the longest lasting vehicles on the planet today. Yes, clearly because of whether you suit it with up a hybrid drivetrain and a CVT transmission, or you select one of the naturally aspirated two and a half liter four cylinders or the naturally aspirated three and a half liter six cylinder engines, it comes equipped with drivetrains that are tested and true and will last the test of time. Now clearly we're talking about a Toyota here. I mean, vehicles like this are made simple and Toyota takes pride in building vehicles that are reliable and never have too many issues. Clearly we're looking at a hybrid. It's got the little blue T right there. And clearly this vehicle is built on a very sturdy platform that's been around a long time. Beautiful laser cut rims, wonderful handles that don't break off in the cold frosty weather beautiful finishing on the back and they are no longer that boring peep car that many people assume that a Camry is because this vehicle's meant to last long miles doesn't mean it has to look like that 
We also can't forget that Lexus is a manufacturer based on Toyotas. And then Tony Amit asked me, what would I actually pick? The Lexus RX350 or the Acura MDX? Well, they're both wonderful vehicles. Let's start off by putting that. You couldn't go too wrong with either. I just want to start by saying Acura has had a few more transmission issues. Lexus, a few fewer. Lexus have clearly had some of the Toyota reputation. They actually have direct and port fuel injection, keeps the valves and the intake clean, whereas Acura does not. They just go with direct injection and the latest engines. They both have three and a half liters. They both put out decent amount of power and performance. Again, transmissions have been a little more problematic in the, in the Acuras. Overall, Acura's got a little nicer styling and a lot nicer detail. And honestly, the Lexus has that front grille that you sort of have to love or not so much. So everybody, it's a personal choice, personal taste. You can't go too wrong with either. But if I were to buy, it would probably be the Lexus RX350. And Lexus built some of the most dependable cars, clearly because they're affiliated with Toyota. And here's another one, the 4Runner, clearly to meant to tow some weight, has a great look to it. It's a very sturdy truck. Clearly body on C-channel frame makes this vehicle very robust. The suspension is sturdy, lots of articulation. The vehicle is soft and supple on roadways, but it's clearly meant to be off-road. There's lots of room in there, and it carries the naturally aspirated 4-liter V6 with 270 horsepower in the latest generation. And that's what Toyota does best. They keep a lot of the drivetrains naturally aspirated that have been around for a long time, tested, run through and through, and they basically believe in, if they've got something that works, rinse, lather, repeat, rinse, lather, repeat. Why fix what's not broken? And that's what Toyota does best, and that's why their vehicles last a long, long time. Largely, their larger vehicles with the V6s are the ones that you're going to find at the top of the heap for longest lasting vehicles, but they're all great. And that's why about 2.3% of Toyotas are still on the road after 200,000 miles. Reigning King. Now, with all of that said, be sure to check out that video. Three of the worst car manufacturers I would never buy. Hope to see each and every one of you on the next one. We'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.